Hello, welcome to this video where we look at the derivative of log functions. What is the derivative of y equals the natural log of x? To do this, we have to tie it to its inverse function. And so we have um, the derivative of an inverse function can be found by taking 1 over the derivative of the um, inverse function evaluated at that inverse function. Okay, and so let's take a look and see how we can use this. Uh, we know that these guys are inverses, uh, e to the x and, and natural log of x. And so um, we can use e to the x and its derivative to be able to figure out how to take the derivative of the natural log of x. This formula says that the derivative of the natural log of x can be found by taking 1 over the derivative of e to the x and evaluating it at the natural log of x. The f in this inverse function derivative statement, the f is e and the inverse is log. Okay, so we know e's derivative is just e to the x and we know that if your inverse function is log x, our job is to try to figure out what its derivative is. According to this formula, we take 1 over e to the x's derivative evaluated at natural log of x. The f prime, but not of x, f prime of f inverse. So that's e to the x. Rip off the x, put in natural log of x. But that cancels nicely. This is why natural log x's derivative is 1 over x. All right, great. So if your function is log x, your derivative is 1 over x. File that away, and we're going to use it a lot. <laughs> okay, now that's a special log, just like e is a special base. What about just a general log tied to the general base, a? So, same thing, you have the same inverse function. So when you're log base a of x, you're the inverse of a to the x. In our chain rule um, derivative video set, we discovered a to the x's derivative as a to the x times the natural log of a. Its inverse function is the log base a of x, and we need to find its derivative. According to this derivative inverse formula, we take 1 over a to the x's derivative evaluated at the inverse function. Rip the x out of that f prime. Take that f prime that we're looking at right now, rip the x out, and put the law base a of x in its place, the inverse function in its place. And these guys cancel, just like e and law cancel, a raised to the log base a cancels and gives you just x. So this is it. If your function is a to the x, your derivative is 1 over x, just like log. I'm sorry, if, you, if your function is log base a of x, your derivative is 1 over x, just like natural log, but it has an extra factor and it's in the denominator, the ln of a. So we'll file these things away. We'll remember them, we'll use them. Now we know why they are. They come from the fact that they have these inverse functions and we know the derivative of their inverse. So we can know their derivative. Okay, and as soon as you learn a function and its derivative, then you can write the chain rule version of it. What if you have something more than just natural log of x? What if the x is, 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 is its own separate function, another function other than just the function x? So then, we have on the next slide the natural log of f of x and its derivative. So we have, well, 1 over the inside function. That's how 1 over x, right? From the previous slide, 1 over x is the derivative. So 1 over the inside function, because now it's going to be more than just an x. And chain rule says don't stop there, though. We have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Okay, great. And you can put those into one fraction nicely. f prime over f. That's the derivative of the natural log of f of x. 
possible. Okay, great. Log base A, same thing. 1 over f of x. Don't forget the log A, though. And then times f prime of x. And you could put that in one fraction as well. Just don't forget the natural log of A in the denominator. So here's an example question. It has arctan in it. You have to remember the derivative of arctan to answer this question. And so we have the natural log, not of x, though, the natural log of 1 plus x squared. Okay, according to what's above there, we keep the 3. We take the derivative of ln of f of x by doing the following, f prime over f. The inside is 1 plus x squared. Its derivative is 2x. And then that's going to be over the 1 plus x squared. So there we have the first part's derivative. This question is asking us to take the second derivative and find out where it's equal to 0 at. So we've taken only half of the function's first derivative. There's this other half here, 8 times the arctan of x. So we have to remember arctan's derivative. And uh, we found that in a, in a previous video. Um, the derivative of arctan is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So 8 times that, we can just put the 8 up top. These guys combine nicely. They all have this same denominator. So the derivative written in one fraction is 6x plus 8 on top of 1 plus x squared. Sorry about the animation being out of order there, but that's okay. Now we're going to take a second derivative because this question is saying where's the second derivative equal to zero? So we use a quotient rule. And so we take the denominator, we square it. We bring the denominator up to the numerator. Multiply by the derivative of the numerator. 6x plus 8 derivative, that's 6. Leave the numerator alone. Take the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x. And remember, there's a minus in between these. You've got the second derivative. So we simplify. It's 6 plus 6x six squared minus 12x squared. Careful with this next one, minus 16x. Okay, put the squares together. Got a nice quadratic up there. Negative 6x squared minus 16x plus a 6. That's our second derivative. And we're asked, where's the second derivative equal to 0 at? Well, we have to solve this quadratic. Don't worry. If you see something that they have in common, factor that out. So we're going to take this negative 2 out that they have in common. And now we have a, a quadratic. And take it out as a negative 2 because we want the squared term to be positive when we're factoring. And yeah, 3x and x, 3 and 1. So, the, 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 so that the middle part comes out to be a plus 8, you need a plus 9. Signs are different, yeah. So minus 1, you got it. Two x values where your second derivative is equal to 0. It would be at x equals a third and x equals negative 3. All right, great. Um, let's go ahead and end this video. We'll come back in the next video and we'll look at how to use implicit differentiation together with logs to be able to help us take the derivative of much more complicated functions. My name is Nikai Rimmer. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. If you have any questions, reach out to me. I'll see you in the next video.